Hello guys, fellow living organisms, why do we use the heart as a, sim a symbol of love, by the way? Uh, why not the lungs? Why not the kidney? Why not the stomach? Because actually the stomach accommodates when you are full, you are satisfied. Uh, today, let's look at the cardiac cycle the flow of blood in uh, the heart. So the heart receives blood and the blood gets out of the heart. Does it mean that by using the sign or symbol of the heart, that uh, symbol of the heart as a sign of love, does it mean that love should be getting into you and uh, out? Like love should be temporary. Okay, let's see the cardiac cycle. Anyway, <clears throat> let us focus on this simulation here. What happens? In the cardiac cycle, blood flows into the heart and then out of the heart. What are the areas of focus? In our previous illustration, in our previous illustration, about the heart, in our previous illustration, during the flow of blood, there are specific structures of uh, focus. These structures are what happens in the atria, both the right atrium and the left vent atrium. What happens to the ventricles, both the right ventricle and the left ventricle? What happens to the valves? What happens to the heart muscles in general? And therefore, what is the direction of blood flow? Let's look at the blood flow. If we look at this instance, and as conventional, we always associate red with hemoglobin and therefore oxygenated blood, blue with the deficit in um, oxygen, so deoxygenated blood. And as we mentioned in our previous session, the right side of the heart comprising of the vena cava, the right atrium, the right ventricle, and then the pulmonary artery are associated with the deoxygenated blood or rather less oxygenated blood. That is why they are represented by blue. The left chambers, the left side of the heart, that is the outer, the pulmonary vein, and then now the left atrium and the left ventricle are associated with oxygenated blood, and that is why they are represented with red. In this scenario, there is a difference between these two ventricles, there is a difference between in the valves and therefore the direction of blood flow. In this case, we have the semilunar valves and we have the atrioventricular valves. The atrioventricular valves representing the tricuspid valves on the right, between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The bicuspid valves between the left atrium and the left ventricle. In this case, blood is flowing from the ventricles, like in this case, blood has flown from the left vent, the right ventricle 
into the pulmonary artery and from the left ventricle into the aorta. To allow that flow of blood from the ventricles, in order to have the flow of blood from the ventricles into the outer and the pulmonary artery, one, it means the semilunar valves must open. What causes the semilunar valves to open? It has to be the force generated from the ventricles. That means the ventricular muscles, the muscles, the ventricle muscles, should contract. And you see, when muscles contract, they lead to decrease in volume. So the volume in the ventricles decrease. Muscles have contracted, that is the, the ventricle muscles have contracted. The volume, the ventricular volume decreases, that generates pressure that has two effects. That pressure will force the cuspid valves to close. Once the cuspid valves close, it means the blood from the ventricles cannot return back into the atria. That force causes the semilunar valves to open. And therefore, the blood from the ventricles have only one way into the pulmonary artery, that is from the right ventricle, and the outer, that is from the left ventricle. At that time, the atria, like in this case, the left atrium is receiving blood from the lungs. Likewise, the right atrium is receiving blood from the vena cava, which means whereas the ventricles are pumping blood out, the atria are receiving blood. That is the systole. Systole to refer to contraction. Contraction. In this case, it is contraction of the ventricle muscles. The systole. So during the systole, the ventricular muscles contract. The volume of the ventricles decrease. The cuspid valves close to prevent backflow of blood into the atria. The semilunar valves open, which allows the flow of blood from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery and the left ventricle to the outer. Next, as blood flows out, another session occurs. In this case, the muscles appear to have relaxed. Which muscles? The ventricular muscles. They have relaxed. As a result of the relaxation of the ventricle muscles, the volume increases. The volume increases. The increase in volume of the ventricular of the ventricles causes a decrease in pressure. And as pressure decreases in the ventricles, the cuspid valves open. Once the cuspid valves open, it means then 
blood flows from the atria to the ventricles, from the left atrium to the left ventricle, and from the right atrium to the right ventricle. The other thing that happens as a result of relaxation of the ventricular muscles and therefore decrease in pressure in the ventricles is the semilunar valves are allowed to like fall back, meaning the semilunar valves close together. Once the semilunar valves close, that prevents backflow of blood from the outer to the left ventricle or from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle. That summarizes that cycle of the cardiac cycle. And that is now what we refer to as the diastole. The diastole to mean the relaxation. In this case, which muscles again are relaxing? The ventricular muscles. So the diastole and the systole, the contraction or relaxation depends on the behavior of specifically the ventricular muscles. That can also be captured very nicely in our chart, which you can easily access from our top-notch offices. That is what we have summarized. The behavior of the ventricle muscles, the volume of the ventricles, and therefore the pressure, what happens to the volume in the atria, what happens to the cuspid valves, what happens to the semilunar valves, and therefore the direction of blood flow. That is a very nice, simplified, hopefully, summary of how blood flows into and out of the heart. What eventually, in a way, contributes to what we feel as the heartbeat. In our next session, we will then describe precisely how the heartbeat is generated in order to cause this contraction and the relaxation of the heart muscles. Until then, bye. And remember to always subscribe to our favorite learning platform, the Top Notch TV YouTube channel. See you. Bye-bye.